Three Habits That Keep Godly Men Weak Number 1. Defiling Habits If we fall or fail on the day, challenges show up. The Word of God explains that it is not because our adversary is more potent than us, but it is simply proof that our strength is relatively small. Proverbs 24, 10 If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Of course, this verse doesn't refer to our physical strength, but the state of our inner man, also known as our spirit. Specific symptoms can give us a preview of our spiritual condition to examine our level of inner strength. The devil will constantly bombard us with images, words and memories to taint our spirit man. This is because guilt creeps in when we sin and feel defiled, and there is a complete lack of confidence when we pray to God. The devil loves to manipulate individuals using unclean spirits to do things that dishonor God. Another example of this is found in 1 Samuel 2, 12-17, KJV. It is essential to rise and fight every speck of defilement before it destroys or keeps us from God. Impure or dishonored are all terms that describe the state of being defiled. It is a great disrespect to God or others to defile something. People, communities, and nations can be defiled by sin. In the Bible, Defilement usually refers to ceremonial or sexual impurity. Those who fall into idolatry will be defiled. In Jeremiah 32, 34, the Lord is angry with Israel because they set up their vile images in the house that bears my name and defiled it. Bringing idols into the Lord's temple was an act of defilement. Sexual sin of any kind defiles a person as well. 1 Corinthians 5, 11. But actually, I have written to you not to associate with any so-called Christian brother if he is sexually immoral or greedy, or is an idolater, devoted to anything that takes the place of God, or is a reviler who insults or slanders or otherwise verbally abuses others, or is a drunkard or a swindler, you must not so much as eat with such a person. For Israel to commune with a holy God, God gave them many ceremonial laws to show them how to cleanse themselves from defilement. Leviticus 7, 21 When anyone touches any unclean thing, human uncleanness or an unclean animal or any unclean detestable thing, and then eats the meat of the sacrifice of the Lord's peace offerings. That person shall be cut off from his people, excluding him from the atonement made for them. There were so many detailed laws that demonstrated the stark difference between the holy and the profane. Defilement of any sort, even when caused unintentionally, separated a person from the community and from God's dwelling place among them. Defiled people could not enter the sanctuary of the Lord. Anytime enemies or backslidden Israel desecrated God's temple with neglect or abuse, God considered it defiled. Under the new covenant, born-again children of God are indwelt by His Holy Spirit. Our bodies become His temple. When we defile ourselves through sin or neglect of the Lord Himself, we must seek cleansing by confessing our sins to God. To commune with God, we must be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Third. There are many ways in which we defile ourselves, but Scripture regularly uses the word defilement to describe sexual impurity and idolatry as two primary sins. These two sins defile any temple, both stone and flesh. 1 Corinthians 6, 18 Run away from sexual immorality in any form, whether thought or behavior, whether visual or written. Every other sin that a man commits is outside the body, but the one who is sexually immoral sins against his own body. 
Sexual sin in all its forms is a metaphor used regularly throughout Scripture to symbolize God's broken relationship with his people. Israel's waywardness was often compared to an adulterous wife or promiscuous daughter. Ezekiel 16, 32 Your adulterous wife, who welcomes and receives strangers instead of her husband. Ezekiel 23, 30 These things will be done to you because you have prostituted yourself with the Gentile nations, because you have defiled yourself with their idols. James 4, 4 You adulteresses, disloyal sinners, flirting with the world and breaking your vow to God, do you know that being the world's friend, that is, loving the things of the world, is being God's enemy? So whoever chooses to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. God used the term sexual sin to describe the worst kind of spiritual betrayal because it is so defiling. Idolatry of any kind also defiles us. Revelation 21, 8 But as for the cowards and unbelieving and abominable who are devoid of character and personal integrity and practice or tolerate immorality and murderers and sorcerers with intoxicating drugs and idolaters and occultists who practice and teach false religions and all the liars who knowingly deceive and twist truth. Their part will be in the lake that blazes with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. 1 John 5, 21 Little children, believers, dear ones, guard yourselves from idols, false teachings, moral compromises, and anything that would take God's place in your heart. When we place more value on anything than on Christ, we commit idolatry. Mark 12, 30 And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, life, and with all your mind, thought, understanding, and with all your strength. The moment we recognize that we have defiled ourselves, we can confess it, ask God for forgiveness. Luke 3, 8 Therefore, Produce fruit that is worthy of and consistent with your repentance. That is, live changed lives, turn from sin and seek God and his righteousness. And do not even begin to say to yourselves as a defense, we have Abraham for our father, and so our heritage assures us of salvation. For I say to you that from these stones, God is able to raise up children, descendants for Abraham, for God can replace the unrepentant regardless of their heritage with those who are obedient. The successful Christian is one who walks in the Spirit so that defilement no longer defines him. Galatians 5, 16 But I say, walk habitually in the Holy Spirit, seek him and be responsive to his guidance and then you will certainly not carry out the desire of the sinful nature, which responds impulsively without regard for God and his precepts. Matthew 15, 16 to 20. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly? and is cast out into the draught. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashen hands defileth not a man. Jesus amplified the point first made in Matthew 15:11. We are defiled from the inside out rather 
them from the outside in. And this is particularly true of ceremonial things like foods. Charles Spurgeon commented, Murders begin not with the dagger, but with the malice of the soul. Adulteries and fornications are first gloated over in the heart before they are enacted by the body. The heart is the cage from whence these unclean birds fly forth. Said plainly, many people who worry about external habits, what they eat and drink and other such things, should care more about what words come out of their mouth. They do more against God and his people by what they say than by what they eat or drink. We read, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. Unfortunately, the emphasis of the religious leaders in Jesus' day, and often in our own, is often only on these external things, not the internal things that make for true righteousness.